you got to want what God wants more than you want what you want. Seek out what God wants for you because in that, you're going to find purpose. You're going to find joy. You're going to find a lot of incredible things. You're making a difference in many single people's lives. So I'm curious, Tom, what led you to start the Thriving in Singleness podcast? Sure. That's an excellent question. I mean, what's really interesting, I get a lot of funny looks when I tell people I run a podcast called Thriving in Singleness, <laughs> and they know that I've been married for eight years. So I have gotten used to that irony of of the fact that I do uh, run this podcast. But it was really what God taught me before I met my wife. And just how God had shaped my heart because I, I, as you said, like I had a very unhealthy desire for a marriage. Uh, I always wanted it. And, and I think that even a healthy marriage, like can be an idol in your life. You know, even a good godly Christian based marriage that mm. can still be an idol. And so I idolized that. Mm. That was something that I kind of built my life around the idea of getting married someday. And so, you know, God had, brought me to a breaking point that I just completely just surrendered. And I said, God, like, you know what? If you want me to be single for the rest of my life, I'm going to embrace that. I'm going to do the things that I feel you made me to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to find ways to glorify you in that. So I was ready to to get my skydiving license and do base jumping. I was leading Young Life at that time. And wow. I was considering taking that full time. And all my crazy shenanigans, all the crazy things I'd done shaped <laughs> into some really cool stories that was able to gather attention from from the youth that I was uh, that I was mentoring mm. and and speaking to. And so I was like, I'm gonna continue doing the crazy things and I, I'm going to just 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 live all out, you know and and so changing my perspective from building my life around the idea of getting married someday to building my life around, if I'm going to be single for the rest of my life, then I'm going to make it great. And mm. I'm going to just like go all in on that. And it was two weeks after that, that I met my wife and something I try to make very wow. clear to, to everybody is like, this is not a formula, you know? And I hear it, I hear it time and time again about how, you know, Oh, you know, you just surrender to the Lord and then God <laughs> brings you your spouse. Like that happens for a lot of people, but that's, that's not a formula. And that's not what I want it to come across as for me. That's my story for me. That's the way that it worked mm -hmm. out, but it's, that's not going to be how it is. However, there's so much benefit in being able to surrender or submit your desires to God. Surrender is God takes that desire and, and forces you like kicking and screaming to just like mm. give it to him where submit is like, God bless those who can submit because they're the ones who are just like, you know what, God, like I trust you. Like I got faith in you and God doesn't have to like smack them down as hard as he did for me to, to get to that point. So something I've been, you know, really pondering a lot lately is, is the concept that being able to surrender those desires to the Lord also, also makes you more attractive mm -hmm. in a way. And, and I think that might be partially why so many people have, have that story of, oh, I surrendered to the Lord. And then I met my spouse, you know, cause there's, yeah, there's a lot of different aspects of surrendering and, and trusting God that makes a person naturally more attractive. And why is that? Why are you going to be more attractive if you surrender to God? So my observation is, and of course, applying my own experience and, and what I see in people is when you are not worried about where life is going to take you, whether it's marriage or singleness, and you're ready to embrace whatever God has for you, you become fearless mm -hmm. because you're ready to take risks. And when, when you make moves and things don't pan out, you're, you're not worried about it and you're not desperate. You know, my wife has the nose of a bloodhound. Had she sensed any bit of desperation in me, she would not have been interested in, in dating me or, or, you know, maybe being my friend at a distance, but not interested in dating me for sure. Because, <laughs> you know, the, the desperation that that just, you know, it reeks, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's not attractive when you can tell somebody's just willing to willing to date anybody, 
You know, yeah. you want to be able to have standards and thriving in singleness also allows you to have standards because if you're making your life very incredible in singleness and you've done a lot of incredible things, you're going to be able to maintain your standards pretty high. Yeah. You know, you should hold standards for somebody who, who hits the right points of, of, you know, godly character, you know, uh, you know, strong leadership and you, you do want to hold those standards and it's easier to hold those standards if, if you're doing well and thriving in your singleness, mm -hmm. because if you're just like lonely and desperate, you're going to lay that bar pretty low for what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing well in your singleness, you're only going to be interested in somebody that's going to make your life even better. And then if you start dating somebody and you realize that it's, it's not a right fit, singleness shouldn't be a scary thing to revert back to. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be comfortable with the idea of being single for the rest of your life, because you know what? God calls some people to that. Yeah. But what are you going to do with that? You know, if God calls you to it, are you going to look back at it and say, well, I wasted all this time trying to build my life around something that never happened. Or are you going to say, well, even though God didn't bring me towards marriage, look at all these cool things that he's done in my life. Look at all the cool things, things he's done through my life. Mm -hmm. And so it really allows so many incredible opportunities to go throughout life. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And I'm curious about something, Tom, because, um, you, you said you were desperate. You wanted to get married. Absolutely. And you just tried everything to get married. And then you surrendered it to God. What happened in that moment or in this, in these two weeks where you were single all in, um, yeah, thinking about skydiving and, and changing the world and yeah. probably all these crazy things. Like what, can you describe a bit more? What's, what was going on in those two weeks? Sure. And, and I, I, you know, I don't want to come from a position of people thinking that I'm sharing this in the sense of, Hey, marriage is bad. Like stay away from marriage. You're better <laughs> off being single. I don't, I don't want that to be coming across at all because marriage is wonderful. Marriage yeah. is beautiful. I'm so blessed. I have a wonderful, incredible wife. I have just an amazing three-year-old daughter that is already snowboarding with me. Oh, wow. And Exciting. we've got a little, little boy on the way. So it's, <laughs> it's really awesome to, uh, you know, to be where I'm at and be looking in hindsight and, you know, how I had my perspective of singleness really shaped me up towards that. And, you know, for surrendering, I do my podcast because I would like to provide the resource and all the conversations that I would have benefited and benefited from in my singleness mm -hmm. because I, I wasn't interested in thriving in singleness. There's great things I was doing. And I'm glad I was trusting the Lord in in the ministry that I was doing with Young Life and and all of that. But God had really brought me to a breaking point. I mean, and it's and it's really silly how it happened. You know, I, I really wish that people are able to submit their desires to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And and it's a daily process having to, you know, trust him. You take it day by day. But it was Valentine's Day and I took a couple of my Young Life guys. We went to the mall and we were going to do what we called ladying. We were going to try and help me find a date. Got these little high school guys, super cute, awesome, you know, and uh, they were going to help me try and land a date for Valentine's Day. And my co-leader caught me. And so like, you know, you know, I think that's all, you know, I think it's all fun and games. I don't see necessarily harm in that. However, you know, it did set, a bad example of maybe some desperation uh. to my young life kids uh, and not, and I didn't live so confidently in my singleness. And so having that vulnerability and, and not tackling it the right way was not healthy. But my co-leader, she had, she happened to be at the mall and she saw that and she like flipped out at me right at the mall. And I had kind of, you know, had, had a awakening, you know, a few weeks earlier, uh. the area director for young life, he asked me, he's like, you know, what if Tom, what if, God wants you to be single for the rest of your life, which I was, I was kind of offended by him asking that. Like it really ticked me off because you know, everybody, when you go to them, everybody always comforts you and like, Oh, don't worry. The right person's out there and they're encouraging you and, and trying to help you to stay strong. But his question really shook me up because nobody asked me that before. Mm -hmm. And it was a few weeks later when I had that kind of rude awakening of, Hey, look how desperate you are and how you're really trying to take this into your own hands and you're not trusting God with it. And it's not setting the best example for your kids. And I, I really just started thinking in my mind, like, okay, like, you know, 
what if I'm going to be single for the rest of my life? Like, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm here working on a dairy farm with the idea of, okay, this is going to be my way of providing for a wife and children someday. Mm -hmm. Like it was, you know, it was a simple option that was in front of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't have to take risks. It was all right there. You know, I'd get married, I'd be provided a house, I'd have a paycheck and low expenses. And, you know, life would be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And so, you know, I, I don't, I don't enjoy farming. You know, I'm not afraid of hard work, but like, you, you <laughs> gotta love it. You really gotta have your heart in it. But I was there because I was like, I, I wanted to get married so bad. And this was mm -hmm. my key to being a, a steady husband for someone someday. And so I had finally been able to surrender to God. And I said, like, you know, God, like, if you want me to be single for the rest of my life, like, I want what you want. I want what you want more than I want what I want. Mm -hmm. And it was exciting. Like, I was I was actually stoked about the idea of being single for the rest of my life because there's so many adventures I'd had that far in life. And I was like, man, there's so many more adventures ahead. Like, this is not going to be a detrimental thing because I'm going to do some incredible things with this. And... And even in that time, you know, I shared my excitement, my enthusiasm to different friends and my friends and like they were married and I was telling them and like, Tom, you know, don't worry, like there's somebody out there for you. Mm -hmm. And like, they're still trying to encourage me. I'm like, but they're not, there might not be. And that's okay. Like I'm comfortable with this. And and so you know, even a lot of other people weren't as comfortable with it as, as I was, you know, they were trying to kind of revert me back towards desiring to be, to be married someday. But man, that really gave me so much confidence and mm -hmm. I was, I was fearless at that point. And, you know, for, you know, for me to my wife, I, I was able to just take insane risks mm -hmm. in getting to know her and our first date. And here's the other thing I want to point out. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm huge on singleness. I'm huge on encouraging people in singleness, but something that I don't want to do is push a whole generation of people into singleness as as something that is and and maybe i need to think about how i want to word this mm. uh very very cautiously because i, I want people to be open to a relationship as well mm -hmm. because here's the other thing like i met i met my wife and i i took action you know you yes. don't want to be desperate you want to be comfortable in your singleness comfortable where god has you but be ready to take action. And you know what? Being confident in your singleness prepares you to take action fearlessly. Yeah. So if if somebody comes along and you find interest in them, by all means, risk it. Go for it. You know, put it out on the line and and see if see if there's interest there. So that's you know th that's my take on on that. And I try to make sure I balance a fine line because I want to encourage people where they are and also encourage them to feel okay with taking those risks. I love that you point that out, Tom, because as you said, it's a fine line. It's so important. And I love what you, what you did, that you had the courage to surrender your desire. That's important. Mm -hmm. But then the, obviously once you've done that, uh, the temptation is um, to say, okay, now I just wait, I pray and uh, my wife or my husband will fall from heaven, you know? And I think that's not, correct yeah. either and i love that you point that out it's so important to take action and and what i found in my life is um well i had a similar experience as you i surrendered i surrendered it took me several years to come to that point mm -hmm. and to say okay i surrender yeah i'm okay with it i still have the desire to get married this desire has never disappeared and i can relate to you and it makes you less or not desperate anymore and you can take more risks and and you see whether it happens or not and and i think but still this is the message to all the guys out there take action be guys be come on be brave mm -hmm. man and 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 go go on a date yeah be fearless be fearless I mean, like seriously i was on a tremendous confidence high when i met when uh -huh. I met my wife, like I was, I was not scared. And this was one of the big things that had inspired me so much for one, the fact that God had brought me to this point of surrender. Mm -hmm. And then I did meet, meet my wife, but I was so fearless in that time. And, and so unafraid that I ended up taking her out to California for our first date. We flew out from DC and flew across the country. I used to live in California mm -hmm. and I reassured her, you know, we're, I have separate sleeping arrangements lined up 
at my friend's. If you're not comfortable at my friend's place, I'll get you your own hotel room. Like that's just fine. And so we, we hung out with my friends out there and it was an awesome first date. Awesome. Took her to all my favorite places, Malibu, Sierra Madre, uh, Universal Studios. And, and it was, it was fun, you know, and I bought these airline tickets five days after I met her. Wow. And <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. This is going to work. And I was telling my friends about this. I was like, this is the greatest idea in the world. I'm like, it's going to be great. <laughs> and they're like, Tom, like slow down. Yeah. You're being crazy. But like, that's, that's a level of fearlessness that I was able to have because man, if things didn't work out, okay, I'm going to go back to singleness and that's not going to be so bad. I'm going to, you know, go to California on my own, have some time to rethink a few things and okay. But it was just wild how everything came together mm. and just the way it all came together and all the ways that it could have possibly gone wrong and not happen. It, it just proves to be a miracle how it, it, it just worked. And, mm. and it's that inspiration that God had given me that really just has me on fire still. And, and I, I want to encourage people in their singleness to find that joy mm -hmm. that I had within that time. You know, if somebody's going to be single for the rest of their life or for an extended period of time, they're going to find so much more joy in that. Mm -hmm. But also, if it does lead them into marriage someday, it's going to bring them in a much better place mm -hmm. in their marriage. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be looking at a person to be resolving their problems and, and fixing their loneliness. You know, they, they found that foundation at God, you know, yes. and they're just finding somebody that's just traveling the same direction. And it, it just makes sense to do life together and Absolutely. have Christ as their foundation. So, you know, man, I'm so glad that <laughs> God brought me to this point of surrender before I got married, because it just shaped our marriage up to be so much healthier with having that perspective without a, a feeling of dependency. Yeah, and what's awesome to see as well is with all your experience and with your courage and now being married for eight years, this just equips you so well mm -hmm. for the ministry you're doing. And um, let's focus on that a bit for a moment because I love that you so passionately um, create amazing podcast um, episode on, on the Thriving in, in Singleness podcast. Can you just tell, tell us a bit what's, why actually you're doing this as a married person? Because usually people get married, forget about singleness. The church often yeah. forgets about yeah. single people or just move on in life. And, um, but mm -hmm. you do something special and uh, you're one of the few married people who invests a lot in single people, encourages single people. What are your thoughts behind that? Man, I mean, God had just really inspired me in in how he gave me an incredible story. And I feel like this is a story that I need to share mm -hmm. and I need to encourage others with that. And when you have something to say, you need to have a platform to say it on. And so I've, I've used the podcast as that platform. And, you know, I really want to be able to put the podcast together mm -hmm. and have the conversations that I would have benefited from when, when I was in singleness and having those struggles of loneliness and and feeling the 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 real nitty gritty difficulty of mm. of just you know facing life and feeling alone in it and i really want people to be able to be encouraged and inspired i want them to be able to do incredible things in their life like the incredible things that you have going on i love seeing that mm. and i i also in turn i want them to be bold I want them to be comfortable with taking risks and I want them to be comfortable with being potentially single for the rest of their life so that they're not clinging to a person because they're desperate for marriage and then end up in a toxic relationship or a toxic marriage and that they can be, be able to, through the healthiness of their singleness, they can end up in a healthy marriage if that is what God has called them towards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love the name thriving in singleness. So tell us in a nutshell what that means. What what are the key things a single person should do to thrive? That's a really good question. And you know, thriving in singleness, it felt so cliche to use that as as a title for the podcast. You know, I feel like thrive is such a Christianese word. And I was also hesitant about using it, but I, I couldn't come up with anything better. But it does make sense because, you know, 
I, I do want people to be encouraged in thriving in singleness. And, and the way that looks is, you know, for one, you know, being able to surrender that desire to God. And if you're not able to surrender to that desire to God, which I understand, you know, it, I can understand when people, they, they want to surrender it to the Lord, but they haven't been able to. Mm-hmm. But in that time, I think it's healthy to pray to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to submit these desires to you. Help me to trust you in this because, because I'm not doing it. Help me to help me to trust you with my singleness. So like that's, that's one. Another thing is, you know, you really have to be praying and reading your Bible. You know, when you're, when you're in the word, you're allowing God to speak to you. When you're praying, you're, you're speaking right back to God. So it allows open communication. It allows you to build a relationship with, with God, which, you know, if you're going to be trusting God, you really got to get to know him. You, you got to know the person that you're trusting in that. And another aspect that I consider of, of thriving in singleness is, is finding purpose. A lot of people, they look at marriage of, yeah, that's, that's my purpose. You know, my purpose is to get married, be a good spouse, have kids and, you know, raise them in, in the ways of the Lord. And, and so they, they think about what their purpose might be in the future, what God might have for them, but they're not looking at what their purpose is Mm -hmm. right now. What are you doing with your time right now? And so seeking out and living out that purpose in singleness is, is very important because Mm -hmm. it also gives you, I want to say it gives you purpose, (laughs) you know, uh, living out your purpose gives, gives you a reason to, to be waking up, gives you a reason to get out there and be doing, doing different things. And, and it also gets you out around other people. It's important to be other people and that, Mm -hmm. and, and also having community is very important. Having people that you're able to do life with, that you're able to uh, share your, your struggles with and Mm -hmm. that you're able to encourage them and that you're just able to grow with. And finding community allows you to to not feel alone. And finding purpose allows you to, to not feel useless. And so all those things together allows people to thrive in singleness. And those I kind of look at somewhat of the foundational principles of of thriving in singleness and, and doing singleness well. There's there's a lot of those aspects that I feel like I did very well. I led young life. So I was doing I, I found incredible purpose in that. I was I was encouraging high school guys and even young adults in their relationship with the Lord and and doing you know crazy things with them and camping out and you know all all the wild stuff. You know I, I was on a farm, so the <laughs> potential was always limitless. You know we had we had bonfires with thirty tons of oh, of wood that we piled on together and <laughs> and it was like all kinds of crazy stuff. So. Among that, you know, find a community. I, I think if I could do something a little bit differently, I would have, I would have searched for some community beyond, uh, or I would have gotten myself established in community beyond Young Life. Like I, my life was like the farm and Young Life, mm-hmm. and I was working sixty hours a week on the farm, and I was with doing Young Life stuff like constantly. And I was for three and a half years, I was half awake the entire time. But it was it was good because when when you're driven by purpose, like God gives you the energy to to do that and to like to to move forward and and so if I were to do something differently, I would have I would have tried to seek out people that were in uh, you know where I was in life and and I had young life leaders that I spent time with and and I guess you could say that was my community of of non teenagers, <laughs> but. I think it's healthy to actively seek out that community. You know, seek out community in your church, get involved there. If your church doesn't have a community, try and establish one. Work hard to do that. I'm also not against going to another church in search of community. Don't go to a church in search of a spouse. You know, don't church hop looking to see what the options are until you finally land one that's got good ones. <laughs> find community. Mm. Find people that you can feel comfortable doing life well with if you're not able to find that in your own church but you know those are things that work together so well and so there's there's a lot of things i was doing well in my singleness that i was i would say thriving in singleness but that surrender part that's a huge one Mm -hmm. and i wasn't doing it and i was reluctant to do that i did not want to thrive in singleness i wanted to just be awesome and I wanted to get married more than anything else. Like that's really what I was, what I was really looking for. And so I, I finally got that, that last piece just at the right time. God's timing is the best timing. And again, not a magic formula, 
Mm. But these are things that are very important to be able to just do life well, yeah. you know, and it's so important to, to, you know, just hit it at that level. Cause man, I, I hit another level when I was able to surrender to the Lord and just be like, Whoa, like there's options here. There's cool things I can do with my life. That's so awesome. That's, that's really fantastic. Um, I am wondering because you, you have seen about both worlds. You mm -hmm. have been single for a time. You have lived as a single well. You have lived as a single not so well. So you have you have a bit both. Yeah. But now you've been married for um, eight years, which is amazing. And yeah. um, I would like to hear from your perspective on because there's a lot of people in church, a lot of married people who might be wondering, okay, what can I do for singles? Because there are now more singles around. Um, singles are, there are more, every year there are more and more singles. What can I do? How can I encourage single people? Um, what should I do or what should I not do? Um, I, I'm sure ma many people have these kind of questions. And, and I'll be honest, in, in marriage it's tough because in marriage, your, your marriage becomes your number one ministry. Mm -hmm. And when you have children, that becomes your number one ministry. You know, I've, I have heard some levels of, of resentment towards married people, maybe not reaching out to singles enough or not encouraging them enough and, and things. And, and I don't like seeing that because, you know, in my seat, my number one ministry is my family. Yeah. You know, I want to make sure I'm keeping a healthy marriage. If I don't have a healthy marriage, I've, I've got a pretty crummy ministry that I'm leading here yeah. that I'm not prioritizing what's most important. I think one thing to recognize is your priorities do change in marriage. Mm -hmm. So you do need to focus on, on your marriage. You need to focus on your children. But I think it is also important to find ways to encourage people in their singleness. Mm -hmm. And that's not always going to be by setting them up on a blind date. You know, sometimes it's good just to, you know, have them over and talk to them and encourage them and be able to, you know, be involved in their life. You know, mm -hmm. our, our church, our young adults group that, you know, I'm, I'm 34 and my wife is, uh, you know, a few years younger than I am. So I, I feel like it'd be rude just to like spit out her age on, on the podcast. I promise I'm not forgetting right now. I don't want people to think I'm like this terrible husband that forgets how what his wife is but i'm like uh maybe i shouldn't share that it's something you shouldn't do i guess but you know we we have a, a young adults group that we we somehow got plugged into versus uh an older generation but you know it's good to be there it, it's got a healthy blend of you know there's a couple there's a few of us that have kids there's some other married couples and then there's some singles and i think it's healthy to to have a blend where there's community that involves all of them mm -hmm. because then you're not just completely shutting yourself out from people that are are in a different walk from you you know and and of course you know there's the single people there's there's more things they're able to to get out and enjoy going out together going bowling and, and things like that and that's awesome i encourage and, and i love seeing them you know spend time together and continuing in that community i think it is important to find a way to to involve singles in your community mm -hmm. and make sure that they're not feeling left out. You know, as a married person, you have a hindsight perspective looking at, okay, like what, and not a lot of people think about this. Like, you know, what are the things that I did in my singleness that brought me to a healthier place in my marriage? And, mm -hmm. and what are the things I was doing in my singleness that, that wasn't so healthy that maybe I was, I was lonely for a long time or, you know, I, I wasn't seeing a purpose, you know, I, I think there's there's ways that people that are married can can observe and and encourage people in their singleness to just be a better person overall. I, I think looking towards self improvement. I'm huge on self improvement, but always mm -hmm. looking for ways to improve yourself is always huge to find ways to to improve upon yourself and and also like how can you encourage others in that? How can you encourage them in their walk with the Lord? Mm -hmm. And you know, is this single person? openly talking about their struggles of singleness, you know, how, how can you encourage them in that? And, and it can feel awkward doing so from the, from the seat of a married person yeah. and saying, Oh, there's definitely somebody out there for you. Like, I, I don't think that's the right kind of encouragement either. You know, I think it's, it's important to make sure that they're finding their purpose, that they are spending time with the Lord in the word. And, 
and that they're that they are trusting God mm. in in where He has them. So you know, s- seek out what would have been encouraging you in that time, and and find ways to encourage them. Wow, that's so amazing. That's so powerful. And I'm wondering, Tom, how are you going to use that knowledge and this passion, your heart, you have to as you're moving forward with your podcast? What is what is your long term vision? You know, right now, I want to continue to encourage and inspire people in their singleness. And I'm I'm trusting God in it. I'm not sure what that long term is going to look like exactly. Yeah. I do know at some point, uh, you know, as I mentioned, family has to be number one ministry. And, you know, yes. we, we have another one on the way. We don't know how many more kids we're going to end up having. And this is a time consuming thing. So I'm not sure. I, w- I would like this podcast to have a way to continue without me if mm-hmm. God calls in that direction. If God wants me to do something more of this full time, then then great. You know, let's let's open that door so I can walk through it. But as far as long term, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I'm going to continue in the direction that God guides me. And and for right now, God's telling me, like, keep at this. You know, I've been doing this two years going strong. I've been able to meet incredible people, have awesome conversations. And, you know, 58 conversations about singleness on my podcast. And I still haven't run out of things to talk about, oh, interestingly great. enough. So uh, it hasn't gotten old. It's, it's, it, mm. it's pretty incredible. Well done. Keep it up. I love it. And I want to thank you thank also. You. On behalf of, of, of singles that you're doing this important work, it's so important to encourage single people. And as we're wrapping yeah. our discussion yeah. up, Tom, I just wanna, want you to share is what is the number one thing we should do to live our best life? Like, do you have any advice for the people listening Ooh. and tuning in? Oh, the number one is you got to want what God wants more than you want what you want. You know, recognize what is an idol Mm. and how you are shaping your life around that idol and seek out what God wants for you because in that you're going to find purpose you're going to find joy you're going to find a lot of incredible things but until you can just just release and trust that God has things in control that's when things get really exciting mm. and and it's an awesome place to be it really is wow that's awesome Thank you so much for sharing all these insights, Tom. Where can yeah. people find you? Sure. People can find our Instagram. It's at Thriving in Singleness. And uh, we, you can also uh, check out our podcast. We're on just about every platform. So just search us, uh, Thriving in Singleness. Check out our episodes. And we really appreciate anybody that can like uh, and subscribe and share our content and you know and also just in- encourage people like hey you know here's this podcast if, if you're if you're feeling like singleness has really been tough for you check this out you know tell your friends about it, it because we really want to be a good resource for those who are who are having a tough time in this awesome thank you so much for being on the show today tom it's great having you thanks so much for having me david absolutely yeah it's been a blast mm-hmm.